From the News Channel 5 Network, this is Sportsline. And there's Sportsline on your television. Steve Lambert here with you. Glad you are here with us tonight on News Channel 5 Plus. Another big day here locally with the announcement that Delaney Walker is officially retiring from the NFL. 14 seasons. He hasn't actually played in three years since he was last with the Titans, but today back with the Titans, retires with the Titans, forever a Titan, and one of the franchise's all-time great players. 300 81 catches during his time, seven seasons with Tennessee, over 4,000 yards, 28 touchdowns, that on the back end of seven seasons in San Francisco, in which he was a backup tight end, but helped the 49ers get to Super Bowl 47. Delaney Walker had a great career, and he, he was part of the group of guys that helped the Titans turn the corner here in Tennessee. When he first got here in 2013, the Titans were terrible. They were terrible. And they were terrible for three seasons. And I remember very vividly at the, in those days talking with Delaney because he was clearly the star of the team. Him and Jarrell Casey were the best two players out there, week in and week out. And he was pretty clearly, for those who watched him week in and week out, one of the best tight ends in the National Football League. He had 60-plus catches in those first two years. He was averaging close to 15 yards a catch. He was putting up touchdown numbers like anybody else in the league. And he never got any respect for it. He was snubbed for the Pro Bowl in back-to-back -back years because people just don't pay attention if your team is hot garbage. And that's what the Titans were at that point in time. So Delaney Walker was a star, but his team was dreadful. Walker and Casey were part of that group that helped turn things around. Then there's a lot of people that deserve credit for where the Titans team went in that 2015-2016 era to where we are now, where they've won six consecutive Season. Six consecutive winning seasons. They've been to the playoffs four times. The Titans turned the corner thanks to a lot of people. Amy Adams Strunk, being the controlling owner, is a huge factor here. She maybe gets the most credit because she has put the right people in charge to run this team. Mike Malarkey deserves a huge hunk of credit for where the Titans were to becoming a respectable football team that battled week in and week out, made it tough on people, and ultimately won games. They had winning seasons each of his two years as the head coach and won a playoff game in year number two. Obviously, Mike Vrabel's taken it to another level. John Robinson has been the GM over all of these winning seasons after they were the worst team in the league in back-to-back -back years. There's a handful of players to go in the mix as well, from guys like Kevin Byard, and Taylor Lewan on the current team to guys like Marcus Mariota and others who are on those teams at the beginning. Well, one of those guys was Delaney Walker. He was here through the bad, and he was here through the transition into the good with both Malarkey and Vrabel. And he was a consistent performer and became a three-time Pro Bowler and will go down as one of the two best tight ends in the history of the franchise, right alongside Frank Wycheck. That's Delaney Walker. And today, it was certainly fun to see him and tell him congratulations. And he is a guy that will be remembered in this city for a long time. He still lives here. And so he's still a factor in the community, still close to the Titans as an organization and wants to see them be their best. But it was cool to get to see him go out on his terms because so often that doesn't happen in the NFL. And in his case, he'd probably still be playing. That's what he said today. If it wasn't for that ankle injury that he suffered in 2018. And he came back in 2019, but re-injured it. He was never really his, himself again after that happened. And that's disappointing. But it's also the reality of the NFL. But what I mean by going out on his terms is 
Delaney waited for a while. He wanted to see if there'd be another opportunity. He tried to work his way back into it and ultimately really realized it's time now to move into the next phase in life, to transition to what is next. But the idea that he gets to do that today and get to come back to the team that he most enjoyed his time in the NFL, the seven seasons he had here in Tennessee, and be there for a day in the stadium where he helped one of the biggest turnarounds in the NFL, from worst to a team that is now literally in first place. To retire as a Titan, forever a Titan, gives him the opportunity to get some appropriate closure to what was a great 14-year NFL career. Your thoughts on Delaney Walker? Certainly welcome on the program tonight. Our phone lines are open, 737-7767. We can also dive back into the conversation from yesterday. A new stadium on the way, pending Metro Council approval and, of course, approval from the Sports Authority. But a deal's been struck between the city and the Titans to build a new stadium in the parking lot just east of Nissan Stadium which of course will mean the Nissan Stadium will be torn down. 55 to 60,000 seats enclosed stadium. It will have a translucent roof. So we will see right through it, get the natural light. It's gonna have a ton of experience. It's ticket packages are gonna be about the experience and about what you can do as a fan, not just about where you sit. The building is supposed to be a uniquely Tennessee building. It ties into the area, the area around it. 66 acres go back to the city for them to do the East Bank development. The Mayor Cooper has talked so much about. Sounds like the goal there is to have a transportation hub on the east side. There's going to be a lot of green space in that development. And the Titans hope, best case scenario, that green space becomes a haven for tailgating for their fans, much akin to what they do down there at the Grove at Ole Miss. Take that to an NFL environment on Sundays. That's all been said. It's been shake, shaken upon between the mayor's office and between the Titans. We'll see if the final approval votes happen, how quickly they happen, and if they can get shovels in the ground by sometime next year and try to get this thing online up and built by August of 2026, which is the goal for the Titans and for the city at this point. Your thoughts on that and the idea of a new stadium here in Nashville, what it means for the Titans and what it means for the community. Obviously, big community impact there because of the events that they will now be able to draw, whether that's a bid for a Super Bowl in the next several years, college football playoff games, the Final Four, WrestleMania has been talked about. Obviously, we had SummerSlam and Nissan Stadium earlier this year. WrestleMania, a little bit bigger event. You get that in a state-of-the-art stadium? I would think you probably would. International soccer games, of course, you've got concerts. The CMA Fest in the summer, which is actually pretty much the second biggest tenant that happens at, at the stadium currently. Four dates from the CMA Fest. There really isn't anyone else who does that. TSU football some years will play as many as four games in the stadium. But year in and year out, CMA Fest has been that next biggest tenant. You'll be able to get more concerts there. Those stadium tours, well now you can have a stadium tour in December or January if you wanted because the new stadium will be enclosed. You'll be able to control the elements. You'll be able to have a great experience, great sight lines. It's going to be a little bit more condensed. They're going to be closer to the action, whether it be for a concert or for a football game. Bring in more things. And this was something, as I talked to some sources at the Titans yesterday. One of the things this will allow them to do, yes, the big events, that's the sexy part of this. The idea that we will almost certainly get a Super Bowl in the next 10 years in Nashville because of this decision. That's the sexy part of the conversation, for sure. But one of the things I know the Titans are very excited about is the opportunity to open this building up more to the community. As Burke Nihill said yesterday at the mayor's office when they announced the agreement, he said, we want this to be the house of the people. A house for the community. 
And here's what they mean by that. The Titans really want to be able to put on community events. Not necessarily the things that are going to fill the 60,000 seat stadium. They're going to do plenty of that. But they want to be able to bring people in and enjoy what is going to be a $2.1 billion stadium. They want to have high school football games in there. They want to have major fundraisers in there. They want to have job fairs, other things for the community. All that stuff. And a lot of that couldn't happen in the current stadium. Because Nissan Stadium is an outdoor venue. So there's certain times a year that you just wouldn't want to hold an event there. And it's a natural playing surface. It's grass. You can't play a bunch of high school football games on the turf because you'll tear it up. It's just the bottom line. But you move into what will be a synthetic artificial turf. It'll be state of the art. It'll be as good as you can get when it comes to artificial. But it will be inside and it will be artificial. And that means you can play high school football there. I mean, there's a scenario out there where they could play a high school football game on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday night inside the stadium and then have a Titans game on Sunday. And you wouldn't have to worry about the turf or anything else. Or maybe it's high school football on Thursday and Friday, TSU football on Saturday, or a college football classic on Saturday, and then the Titans on Sunday. They can get more use out of the field, but other things as well. As I mentioned, job fair. I've heard about other possibilities getting students to come out for field trip type of things. And one thing, this was an anecdotal thing, but one of the biggest events that happens currently in Nissan Stadium that I had no idea about, by the way, and so I doubt a ton of people do in the community, Special Olympics of Tennessee has their largest fundraiser of the year in the spring inside Nissan Stadium. They actually get down on the field and they, they do events and I think have a flag football tournament down there. But it is the biggest single fundraiser of the year for Special Olympics Tennessee. And the person who was telling me about this said, you put it inside where the calendar essentially opens up for 12 months of the year. And you have a roof over the stadium with artificial turf. How many more fundraisers could you have? How many more groups like the Special Olympics of Tennessee could you bring in there and help out? That is a positive aspect to the community. Now, there's a lot of debate going on. It is going to be debated in Metro Council. That is for sure. So this is not an official done-done deal yet. But certainly yesterday, the Titans and the mayor's office did their best to tell you all of the positives of what could come from this stadium. We want to discuss that tonight with you. 737-7767. We begin tonight with Carl. Carl, good evening. Yeah. Go ahead, Carl. You're on the air. Oh, yeah, I was just talking, he's talking about community, like they ran all the community out of Nashville. Come on, community coming to. Hey, how's it going, man? Oh, man. Carl, you gotta turn down your TV. Talk to me here oh, on the phone. Okay. Oh, it's his feedback, yeah, I'm sorry. Yes, but, the, you know, you talk about community. I mean, like, you know, with the, when they raised the mortgage taxes and all that stuff, like they ran the community out. You know, what community are you talking about? Can't nobody even afford to live in Nashville now. Uh, hey, you raise fair points, but that's not going to change the issue of the stadium. The stadium is yeah, a discussion of whether it's coming or not, and it's in a part of town where you aren't running anyone out. I mean, there's no one who lives on the east bank of the Cumberland River right now. And so that's a part of the community that is about, at this point, entertainment and sports. And they're going to try and put more around that. And they're going to try and put some of the community in there. That's part of the development that they're talking about. I don't know if it's going to make you feel any better about the rent prices or mortgage prices in Nashville. 
I mean, everything's expensive just about anywhere right now, and Nashville's certainly at the top of the list of that. But uh, what do you think about, Carl? I, I certainly understand and hear your point. What, what do you think about the stadium, though? I mean... Well, okay, the stadium. Me, personally, I don't think they should get down until they win a championship. Okay. Yeah, you know, my opinion, you know, that's the way I feel about it. Win a championship, then we'll give you a new stadium. So, <laughs> well, uh, I, I appreciate that thought for sure. That obviously isn't the way it always goes in the NFL or in professional sports. I guess my question to you, though, is understanding your criticism about how things have gone in the community versus the stadium, if – if they take some of this public funds, and a lot of it's bonds, at least from Metro Nashville, but the state right. funds or whatever, if they repurpose that in some way, where do you want to see it repurposed? Uh, how would they make you happy better using the resources that they're going to help with on the stadium? Well, I mean, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know what to say about that, man. I really couldn't say. Well, well, that's fair. And I didn't mean to put you on the spot there, Carl. I appreciate you calling in because your perspective is important. I mean, this is a community issue for sure. And that's why it's going to go in front of the Metro Council. Uh, the thing that often is lost somewhat in these conversations, though, is this doesn't this isn't necessarily an either or. It's not like you either put the money into the roads, you have better roads or you build the football stadium or you do this in a neighborhood or you build a football stadium or you put this into policing or you build a football stadium the idea is to hopefully be able to do all of those types of things and the mayor just just for reference 760 million dollars in bonds are going into to help the titans to build the state titans paying more than that 500 million is coming from the state the city's putting in bonds through the sports authority that will be paid back through the one percent increase in hotel taxes and it'll also be paid back through all of the sales tax of things that will be sold with sold within the new stadium and in the development around the new stadium when that comes up and so as the mayor said yesterday this should be a moment where none of your tax dollars property taxes aren't going up People in the city of Nashville are not going to pay for this with their tax dollars moving forward from this point. Now, of course, there's some argument that you've paid some taxes to the state of Tennessee, perhaps, and that that money is going into it. But the mayor himself seemingly did the best he could to try to get this deal done for the team because ultimately it's going to get done. Uh, someday there's going to be a new stadium, and this was the time that pretty much needed to happen from a cost-effective point. And he tried to make that point yesterday with what he talked about and the deal. The question is, does the community, does the Metro Council believe it was a good deal? We go back to the phones and say hello. I, I believe this is Lauren. All right. Have a great day. Let's try, let's try this again. Lauren, are you there? Hello? Yeah. Yeah, man, I was just want to... Okay. I don't know what that was. Anyway, our phone lines are still open, 737-7767, the number. And it's an interesting conversation. We've had a lot of these conversations before the news of yesterday on this program for a long time. I, I've said it since pretty much the day I walked into Nashville back in 2011, so 12 years ago. I was already talking about, not quite 12 years ago, already talking about the need to have a conversation about what the future of the Titans football stadium was going to look like. Because at that point, Nashville was creating a name for itself as a destination city and a big event market. They were getting the NHL All-Star Game. They were getting the NHL Draft. They were getting these other events to come to town, and they were doing a good job with it. The NCAA Women's Final Four was set to come in a couple of years. And it just became more and more clear that Nashville was kind of capping out in what it was going to be able to host. But the city was doing a great job, and everybody was saying, oh, we want to come back again, or we want to bring a bigger event here. Well, there was only so many bigger events you could get to at that point. 
And I wasn't necessarily saying at that time you have to have a new stadium tomorrow. What I was just saying is the conversation has to begin about what the next step is going to be. Because it is difficult and you don't want to tax the community too much. You don't want to be in those types of positions. Because after all, it is a sporting venue. It can do a lot of great things for the community, but it doesn't need to take the precedence when there are other pressing issues. And I think at times that conversation on this matter took too long. It probably took five years longer than it should have to really heat up and get to a place it was supposed to. Ultimately, maybe it's getting to the right spot. And I think one of the points the mayor said yesterday, and this will be interesting because I know some members of the Metro Council want to see exactly the breakdown on the cost of this. But under the initial lease that the city signed with the Titans to bring them here and give them a new stadium, the Coliseum at the time, now Nissan Stadium, it was a 30-year lease. Titans have the option to make it 40 years, which could stretch all the way to 2039 if they don't get a new stadium. So ultimately, you're talking about 40 years in that initial stadium. And under that agreement, the city is liable for all damages, renovations, and upgrades necessary to maintain Nissan Stadium at a first-class level commensurate with what the rest of the National Football League operates in. And the mayor's office, through a third party, went out and looked at what that would cost over the next several years, and they saw that the cost would be well over a billion dollars, maybe as close as two billion, or as high as two billion. And you're talking about building an entire new stadium, state-of-the-art stadium, for $2.1 billion. And in this deal, the Titans assume the responsibility if the construction costs go over or if there's a renovation or an upgrade needed down the road. They become the backstop, not the taxpayer in the city. That was something the mayor tried to drive home yesterday in terms of the liability will shift in this move from the Titans to the team. And his argument with that was a generation ago or 25 years ago when the city first started to talk to the then Houston Oilers about the franchise moving here to Tennessee, they had to give the team essentially a sweetheart deal. That's how you get a team when you don't have one. You offer to build them a stadium. You offer to do the upgrades when necessary. You offer certain things to try to lure them there because they don't have to leave where they're currently from. That's how the Titans came. 20 some years later, the deal isn't as good for the city. And that was the point that Mayor Cooper tried to make yesterday about it was time to adjust the deal, or it is time to adjust the deal. And a new stadium maybe cost a little bit up front, but the deal out of the stadium can make things much, much better in the long run for the city and ultimately its citizens. And from a Titans perspective, here's another thing I learned yesterday from sources around the team. They believe that a state-of-the-art building over there, which would be much different than Nissan Stadium, it was an adequate, nice building when it was built, but it was not meant to last for decades and decades and decades. A new state-of-the-art stadium built in a 2022, 2023, 24, 25 type of way is a stadium that should have lasting power. They'll have at least a 30-year lease on it. And the quote I was given was that the Titans believe it can be their home for 50 years and beyond, which is the other thing here. If you can do it and do it right now, you can prevent having a much bigger expenditure down the road and delay when you have to have this conversation again. You look around the stadiums in the league that have been built from the time that the Titans built the Coliseum, now Nissan Stadium back in 1999, to the most recent stadiums, Allegiant and SoFi. 
the prices have gone up 400% or more. SoFi Stadium is $5 billion. That's absurd. It's beyond what anyone else has done by at least double. That place is the palace of all palaces. But you look back to the early 2000s, people were building stadiums for four and five hundred million dollars. Now the going rate is two billion. If you wait longer, how much longer before it's three billion to build essentially the same stadium? And if you do it the right way, is it 50 years from now before you have this conversation again? Hopefully so. There was an era where stadiums, it's a 20, 30 year deal. And that was the era in which the current stadium was built. Hopefully the next era is different. And certainly the parties involved in this deal believe it will be. Our phone lines are open 737-7767, the number. We want to hear from you tonight on this topic or others. You can bring up another topic as well. Open lines here on Sportsline. You're watching News Channel 5 Plus.